one was not inspiring, and it was all that, you know, nylons and polyesters and chemical stuff. And I never learned anything other than the basic knitting, so I could do scarves forever. <laughs> and I never asked anybody, because I couldn't. I didn't have a grandmother to ask, she was a witch. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that so American. All the trauma in my family. Anyway, um, <laughs> and you couldn't go into the, the wool store in the village and say, excuse me, can you tell me how to FSK? <laughs> Don't you know how to do that, dear? Didn't your mother teach you? You know, it was like there was, there was just old biddies that used to knit balaclavas for the war. <laughs> 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 That's what knitting was. I mean, when people see you knitting now, they go, oh, how cranny-ish, you know, are you in menopause? <laughs> <laughs> but years later, I was making a movie in Baltimore, and I went for a walk in this charming little village area, and I saw this yarn store, and the window was full of all these yarns and bamboo needles and but and it was just edible. It was so exciting. I thought, oh my goodness, look what yarn looks like now, you know. And there was a sign saying lessons. And I finally I walked in and I said, Hello, I'm a forty year old scarf enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a few big squares, I've made some Fred Flintstone type shifts in my time. <laughs> and they sat me down and they taught me the basics and suddenly I could do it. It was like Wow, you know, it's like being able to speak Italian something. <laughs> and I got back to Los Angeles and I, you know, the old web search, Google, and a big picture of Mel came up. <laughs> I thought, oh, she's gorgeous. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> she gorgeous? <laughs> I thought I'm going to get to know this lady. I came round to your store and I met Mel Clark. And it's been. So this book is kind of a celebration of Tracy and my enthusiasm. Tracy is a very hard act, act to follow, by the way, and I always have to speak after her. Um, uh, it's a celebration of our, um, how happy knitting makes us. Um, it really does, and uh, it's so much fun to think of things to make, um, new items of clothing that we fantasize about and can can finally get to make and wear, bags, you know, all kinds of things. Um, so really that's it. I mean, a lot of people have asked, is Tracy a real knitter? Well, yes, she is. And I, I quickly realized that, I quickly realized once I met her that Tracy is as um, sort of brave and adventurous about knitting as she is about everything else. Um, and uh, she's an intrepid knitter, that's my word for Tracy. Okay. Um, <laughs> because she's not afraid to, you know, she's really involved in the process of, uh, of knitting. She, she likes the process and will rip things out and do them over and take risks. And um, so, you know, it's just been a great pleasure to collaborate on the book with Tracy. And, uh, you know, we, we just wanted to do a book that was fun, that was kind of had a West Coast theme, that. We like to knit all year round, in fact, every minute of the day. And uh, so we wanted projects that uh, <coughs> you can knit all year round. And um, also, you know, my background is I'm from New Zealand and... The land of the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> there are 80 million sheep and 4 million people. And I, did, I did have a pet lamb called Bunty when I was a child. So I, I, she was a rescue lamb, actually. She <laughs> Uh, my, my third grade teacher brought her back from the mountains. <laughs> um, <laughs> one eye had been picked up by a hawk, and the other eye had a cataract, and they were going to put her down. So my teacher brought her back, and I, my hand shot up. Yes, I wanted her, so I took her home without asking my mother. <laughs> I got a feather in the kitchen until she grew too big to stay in the kitchen, and then she went into the backyard and fertilized the lawn and turned into a he with enormous horns. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after Bunty got really big and started, you know, getting... Actually, we tied her to the clothesline. Do you have rotary clotheslines? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. And the back lawn. We <laughs> rotary clotheslines. <laughs> okay. No, no. <laughs> so I tied her to that, and um, anyway, that was the beginning of my... Uh, they like shared well. in a paper. <laughs> <laughs> if they pretend this happened, no, they killed it. Uh, he, he was taken to a farm, nice farm on the outskirts of town, according to my <laughs> We're thinking that maybe he ended up with somebody silly, because they do like eating mutton in New Zealand. It's not just all about lamb. Mutton is good too. So 
Anyway, that's um, my history. So in the book, there's some projects too that are very much influenced by um, my love of the South Pacific and the textiles there. And um, so there's a few descriptions and New Zealand names and things that, you know, there was quite a lot of inspiration from New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. But you, um, your design was really what inspired me to go further because I loved all the new yarns, but when I went to Mel's store, there were various items of clothing around, like this, you know, this lovely cardigan Mel's wearing, and this dress, she can let me have a good swing on this. <laughs> <laughs> I liked some of the things in the book, you know, the books that were around, but I thought, no, I'd love Mel to do a book because that's what gets you get sexy. It has a vintage feel, but it's a clean line, and I wanted to, you know, knit what you've made. And so I didn't think there was a knitting book that was somebody who was a novice who was like becoming passionate about the, the thing, and, and you needed a book, I thought, that would uh, that's asking all the questions everybody is scared to ask. <laughs> Because I see so many people when I'm meeting, they go, oh, I wish I could do that. I could never do that. You know, it's classic, look, if I can, you can. And I put lots of essays in the book about, you know, my mistakes and learning to be patient and unraveling things and shutting my knitting in the car door and someone driving off with it and dragging it behind the car and me screaming and all this such dramatic stuff in this book. Oh, you're on the edge of your seat. But it, and my kids laughing at me and what, but... It's really Mel's design that, that totally inspired me. And, you know, because I, I also had a thing about knitting was like cold weather Vermont, you know, holiday sweaters. <laughs> you know, like women call Pat with a reindeer on one breast, <laughs> no man on the other. <laughs> and we're going to make, we're going to make gingerbread houses with all the little ones. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So there's that image of it, but now in our book there's palm trees and you know it's uh, it doesn't really an all year round thing. And how many knitters are here? Well, you are. We all <laughs> And the feel of it and the ta it's a tactile thing and it's a primal thing and it makes me so happy to. I mean we're we're here today and we did a book signing and the people that make the koigu yarn are here and they. Uh, they, that's a great Canadian yarn. You know, we're like <laughs> We're like, oh man, it's like they're like the Rolling Stones of the yarn world to us. And they were there. <laughs> the Quaker people, yarn. <laughs> 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 but there's always something more to knit. We have oh, millions of ideas all the time. It's right? better than therapy. You get something out of it. You do. And I think that after your tour of the museum this evening, you probably found a few more things that you'd like to get to. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Lots of inspiration. It's lovely.